This conference will now be recorded. Okay, I'm going to call the meeting of the Finance Committee for order. And clerk will note the members present. Right. I didn't have to take my shoes off, but I think I've got a quorum. We appreciate it. Yeah. Councilor, uh, have an agenda act that we call him. Okay. He's trying to do it good. We'll wait for him and then we'll add one more. No, he wants us to call him. Yes. Well, he wants us to call him. Yeah. Yeah. What is he? Nine first? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Those are the Howdy. Hey. How are you doing today, Counselor? We're going to the staff here in San Angelo on the way home. Okay. Sounds good. All right. How Good's do we way. not know that's not an AI voice and it's really you? <laughs> <laughs> now you know. Okay. Now, now, now. Okay. That okay. laugh did it. <laughs> okay. So we're called to order. Roll calls reflect all five members of present. Need a motion for the uh, approval of the agenda. Mr. Chairman. I, I move that we approve the agenda for the Finance Committee for Tuesday, July 2nd, 2024. Second. Got a motion and second. Any comments? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, passes 5 0. Okay, before we get into the action item, I have a little statement to make. We've got a preliminary letter from DFA, and we're using our cash reserves still at 12% plus in the 25 budget. So take that for what it's worth. Okay, moving right along. Consider recommending approval of purchases. Ms. Griego. Good afternoon, Chair and Committee members. Um, I'm here to ask you today to consider recommending approval of purchases over $60,000 pursuant to the city's purchasing policy. We have uh, two, and I'd like to ask that one of them be amended. Um, the first one is for the contract on the janitorial service at $180,000. That included two buildings that the contractor will now only be performing one a building. So she's not going to renew her contract on the other building. So I need to reduce that down to about 110. The 180 is now 110? Yes, sir. Even Stephen? Yes. The, okay. the second item is for out, outside labor force, which is with Elwood. Um, staffing for our temporary services. We have two employees that uh, are assigned to the Air Center um, through Wellwood, work 40 hours a week, five days a week, and augment the, uh, the four employees I have now. Okay. Who wants to move that amendment? I have a question. Okay. How many employees are under this outside labor force? Two. Two. And they're full-time employees? Yes. We looked at what it would be a cost effective to make to put them on city payroll. Last year, and it was a lot more. I don't remember the figure, but it was. What positions are these? They're just grounds maintainers. Guys that move the runway and the infield and that right. kind of stuff. Is it more because of their salary, because of the benefits and everything added in? The benefits. Thank you. Who's going to amend the first item? Um, could I, have a, I have a question as well, sure. uh, Chair. Um, and this uh, service agreement, is it a five-year service agreement? For Elwood or for uh, janitorial? I was just looking at the janitorial, custodial. Janitorial service. is a four-year contract with uh, one-year options. Okay. 
So it's still lit and we're exercising the one year option. Yes, sir. Well, Mr. Chair, I move we accept the amendment for changing $180,000, 673.91 to $110,000 for janitorial services. Okay. I second. Got a motion and a second. Any other comment? Okay, on the amendment, we're down from 180,000 and some change to 110,000. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? Aye. Okay, so passes by two. Back on the aye. You opposed? As amended. As amended. Okay. As amended. Mr. Yes, sir. I uh, move uh, that we approve the budget amounts as amended for the con contract janitorial services of the labor force. Second. Got a motion and a second. Any further comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes four zero. Okay, so item number two. The chair can you cover this? All the waste department, I just want to pull this over. Bypass infrastructure, we came straight to finance. The reason we did that, due to some long lead items, we're trying to get them into the city this ASAP. Um, Showing from bond equipment, high bond equipment, and help us if they have two sellers on the roof. They can have delivered by May, full to November. All specifications of the truck meet the requirements of the collection supervisor. The reason I bring that up is because the main supervisor is the one working on it. Collection supervisor is on me. We've been utilizing the source for a contract, um, 060. These two items, this item, the property trucks are approved in our FY25 budget. Next item. Here's a regular that we're looking to procure. You notice that body is similar to some of our side orders. We're trying to use the same the same chassis of this. Same chassis as the other equipment so we can have consistency. Next slide. And this will be very similar to what we have now. We're trying to keep the fleet pretty consistent. Any questions? Questions. Oh yes, Chairman, and you said this is being purchased on a price agreement? Yes, it's source loan. Okay, source well 060912. Yeah, CRM, we verified that it is, it had not expired. It's, in play. it's lit, okay. It's lit. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. This is a 43 or $45,000 increase from last year. When we purchased those two vehicles from Battle last year, they had 30000 The two, have we tried to negotiate? Yes, we try to hammer up getting into work. So this contractor here, because they have them on the ground, we have accessibility, we're trying to maintain it for the same. So try to push, I guess the savings from last year, there can't get back now. I mean, last, year, you. last year we had a savings of 30 bucks. Yeah, we had, a, because they had them on the ground as well. Yes, sir. And this question whether how hard we can push them to get a reduction of these. But my other question is, uh, for a finance department, if these things come in, are there sufficient funds in the cash balance to handle this transaction? It's part of the budget, so yes, it's. You have sufficient cash, right? Yes. Well, Pete, when are they going to? When do you they're on the ground. So, when did we expect delivery? October, November. So, the chats are on the ground. Oh, okay. And the body comes from a different manufacturer. So, they meet up at a manufacturing facility, they marry them together, they ship it out. Okay. Okay. So we're way downstream when these actually show up. Thank you. I, I will have a conversation with all. I see if I can get that. Yeah, that's a five percent increase. Yeah. Over the I'll have a conversation. This is our. This will be our four trucks. Yeah. Well, this is why we can't have a 
If not, have a complete discount. My grocery bill has only... gone up more than that. <laughs> All they can say is no. Well, I got it. Okay. Any other questions? Hearing none, much pleasure. Um, Chairman, I'd like to consider. Are we talking about the rear loader and? Yes. And the side loaders? Yeah, it's all in one app. All in one app. Okay. Same company. I'd like to make a motion to approve the approval for the purchase of two new battle side loaders um, and one new battle rear loader in the amount of 1.2363812 for the consent agenda. Second. Okay, got a motion to second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Passage five zero. Next item. Mr. Paro, keep going. Committee Chair, Committee Members, thank you again. Um here to bring to you a motor grader. Uh, we're looking to purchase from the caterpillar. Uh yeah, our phone they have a motor grader that they will have delivered in four to six months after receiving the first order. Again, all specifications. So that I make a supervisor. Purchasing through cat rider utilizing a social contract 022-119-CAT. We'll be purchasing one. That's a typo. In, in the, it says gravel up there, but this is actually the greater. And the greater is approved at 517-2. We confirm so the council. Questions? Any questions? Uh, can you chair, if I may, I'd like to approve that for 571 greater. And I don't have, I can see it's just 517 on your own. Okay, perfect. It is 517? Yes, 517. I'll put it on. Okay. Hey, when do you expect this to land? Around six months, we're thinking more toward the four month um, level. So if we can actually have it out there. The motor we do have now, if you want to clarify, that motivator was actually four streets. Expect that four streets for alleys. It was never the except on here for yeah, towards the end of the slide. Caterpillar is what we already have out there. So again, we want to trade consistent what we have. And this does come with Tanai Hills train, an international train facility in Tucson. It's already built into it as well. It's got a GPS, Kimball, ground service technology in it as well. Well, thank you. I want to talk that stuff. <laughs> okay, so maybe we'll have it by Thanksgiving, but hopefully before Christmas. Yes, sir. Okay. Any other questions? Much pleasure. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. I move that uh, we approve purchase of one 140 LBR all wheel drive motor grader from Wagner equipment, the amount of $517,211 be placed on the consent agenda. Thank you. Got a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes five zero. And now, one more time. Thank you, Chair, Committee members. Um, I'm coming in with a raffle truck. That's it. Yeah, do it. Talking of Texas, I promised they have one raffle truck that could be come out and deliver in a hundred with a short. Again, all, specif all specifications and trust in the requirements of the bulk trash supervisor. The different supervisor now, and also the three minute supervisor as well. Purchasing through Doggett Freightliner of South Texas, utilizing TIPS contract 230802. We will be purchasing one gravel truck for the price of 231665. Next slide. 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 Next
Uh, yes, Chair. You know, I'm looking at these these contracts. Are these are these are contracts, not price agreements, right? They're they're a little bit of variation of both. They're state pricing agreements. They're, so they are gone through the state. Yes. Okay. That's what we call all of them. So we're staying in the alignment with procurement. Okay. Yes. I, I just it just those numbers just don't look familiar to me whatsoever. Used to zero zero dash zero two dash you know whatever and this pound. Um, I'm sorry, I had to ask. That's fine. I can have both. I can sleep better now. No, I'm fine. I'm fine. I trust you. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? <clears throat> What's your pleasure? I'll move this one, Mr. Chair. I move that we consider approval for the purchase of one new grappler truck from Doggett. Miner of South Texas in the amount of $231,665.52. A second. Consent. Consent. Oh, so it's consent. A second that one too. <laughs> okay, any further comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, passes five years. And now we're on the solid waste purchasing. Do you chair the amendments? I'm going to hand this off to Jenny, give her the experience, and I'll have her present this. Okay, keep that out too. All right, Debbie, I didn't wait. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we we're asking for, uh, to follow what we did last year for the over 60%, we we're asking for $220,000. For Miller Engineers, this is our environmental engineers that we use. It's for our environmentals. It'll be for uh, the construction of South Side B, which is approved in our tackle projects design. Uh, then we have Snyder Tank Holding for 70000 That is the company we have an ITB with that we purchase our 300 gallon alleyway containers from. The bond equipment, as we've already heard, was for the Three trucks we are buying for the 1.2 million. Doggy of Texas is the $231,665.52 for the grappler. Cat Wagner is a little bit slightly different. The 517000 is for the motor grader. The rest of that $600,000 amount is for us to be able to buy any uh, parts we need. And then Toter for the 70000 is our 96 gallon curbside containers. Uh, these are all in within our budget. Uh, if we do have to go over it, we'll come back to this committee and city council again to get over it. Any questions? Yeah, I do. Okay. Well, the, the amount I was going to ask what happens to the difference because you budgeted 571,000, you spent 517, and you're saying you want it for parts. Well, does that money just sit there until you need part? Well, or what happens? Two separate different accounts. So there's an account that is our capital uh, equipment, which will be where the motor grader from comes from, and the rest of the amount actually comes out of our M and L equipment line. So it's two separate lines. So where's that money held, though? I can answer. Yeah. Councilor, that's extra. This savings of seventeen. The difference in that amount. It'll stay in the line item, and if I try to move that, what I'll do is I'll come to finance and reallocate those funds to something else. Okay. Like Europe. Okay. Don't just move it. Yeah. It sits there in that capital equipment, and if I'm mistaken, I'm sure Tony and Jane will correct me. It still will stay there. If I move it, I'll come to you and ask you, hey, I have seventeen thousand dollars of saving. Are you okay if I move it towards X, Y, Z? Okay. It will be coming mm -hmm. Great. I I agree with your question. That's what I was going to ask, but it was 571 goes to 517 plus 51 does not equal $600,000. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And so you're asking for $51,000 in uh, maintenance and repair for equipment. So, and it looks like this must have been a typo of 517 versus 571. Mm -hmm. So why don't, why, don't, why, don't, why don't we correct it to the right amount? You want to make an amendment to that, Councilor? Yeah, I'm going to amend this thing. And so budget approved for FY25, it's 571 to 11. We have a maintenance agreement already for us. There were Yes, the one that we proposed. What is that total? 517? It should be 568, 619 total. 
Not six hundred thousand. Five sixty-eight, six nineteen total. When you add the five seventeen two eleven to the fifty-one thousand four hundred eight. Just sort of letting items sit in a line item forever. Why? Why do that? Right. And Chairman, if you will, uh, the procurement also has a preventative maintenance of, that it comes with it. So a lot of our equipment does have that. There's some stuff that's out of warranty uh -huh. that we have to pony up. Well, to stay in warranty, you have to do the first line of maintenance with Caterpillar. So we do a significant amount. We have an extended warranty on a lot of those items. Mm -hmm. Some of the items, depending on what happens. Very specific on what it does cover, it's under warranty and what it's not. Right. You have to utilize cat oil, you have to utilize cat filters, cat everything. Cat stickers. Or you void your warranty immediately. Yeah. So that's uh, so why yeah. we don't let them we don't we really don't have the French summits. We verify for cat okay. warranty. So that's why I was wondering about the maintenance because it's pretty much built into the we do have other equipment that's out of a portion of the maintenance built into the price. We have other pieces of equipment that are outside of warranty mm -hmm. that we utilize that money. Or the cat is expensive. Five seventy-one. Okay. So what was your total? Five sixty-eight, six nineteen. Page. I got it. Where it says some funding source can authorization not to exceed it was six hundred is now five sixty-eight, six nineteen. Okay, what is it? One, Five, six, eight, uh -huh. six, one, nine. Even, Stephen. Did you add up the total difference? Okay. Um, That's what they're asking that a for. First amendment. Yeah. Now, wait a minute here. So, we're trying to get this thing really. So, you got under funding source for CAD. You had originally had 571, that goes to 517. Then you have 51,000 for MR equipment. And then you have another 53,000 for the landfill. Well, if you add all three of those originally together, that's over 600,000. So, what are you asking for approval here? So, on the landfill operating budget of the MR equipment, not with Sullivan's collections. Collections does not have cut. So that doesn't need to belong in here then, the no. collection budget. No, so that no. needs does that need to be a so stricken from this or stricken what? from the abstract. We already have a lot of dedicated to that. So the funding source funding source authorization for Cat Wagner does not include the fifty one four oh seven, correct? Correct. Okay, so that number is gonna change again. So now we got five one seven. 211, and then you're asking for 53,876. Now we're now the number now is 571 088. So the request. Chair, I'm going to try to correct this. So, sure. Chair, we're going to amend the uh, approval of the solid waste purchasing authorization request to remove the funding source request for this solid waste collection budget number. We're going to remove that of 51,407.96, remove that from and change the total amount for. Wagner authorization not to exceed five hundred seventy-one thousand and eighty-five dollars. Eighty-five zero eight five. Eighty-five for eight eight. I'm sorry. Eight eight. eight, eight. Make up your mind. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Zero eight eight five seventy-one zero eight eight. Okay. But then that's the total. Like. Yeah, that's what the total should be when we get them all yeah. done. So is that your motion? That's my motion. So I have a second. Second. Got a motion for second. Any other comments? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. 
Okay, pass the five zero on the amendment. Now back right. to the item. Okay, Mr. Chairman. I move that we place on the consent agenda recommending approval of the solar waste purchasing authorization as amended. Second. Okay, we've got a motion to second. Any further comment? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? That's just five zero. Thank you. Okay. For the item number eight. Six. 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 Okay. No, we've got a big picture. It's on the slide, but make it easy for Jay. Thank you. I appreciate that. Oh, okay. Item six. You say we're on item five? We're on item six now. <laughs> no, you said eight. Oh, eight. Oh, Joe. Okay. Sorry. Right. Okay, man. I'm mm -hmm. only two. I'm in. I'm taking only two out. And after this, thing, you'll be one closer to eight. <laughs> You're close enough. I can get you. You should get to eight. I can get it. Just don't get sloppy. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> he leaves that he's laid on the floor. Right? He's <laughs> out on the couch. Right. On the table. Okay. Okay, Mr. Chairman and committee, what we ha you have before you is the recommended award of RFP 24 013 Option Flood Prevention Design Project to Freeze and Nichols Incorporated in the amount of $1,050,840, which includes GRT. Uh, we did do a public RFP. We had four vendors attend the pre-bid and pick up plans. We only had one vendor respond. And part of it is uh, there's an engineering shortage. So two of the firms didn't have the capacity to do it in the time frame that we're expecting it. And just to kind of briefly show you, and some people still don't get, uh, grasp the concept of this project. So here's Hobson Road. This is the West Perimeter Road up here. This is the railroad tracks. So we're going from the West Perimeter Road to the railroad tracks. And then if you can picture south of the railroad tracks uh, and that where the water ponds are ready, that's where the detention pond is going to be. We'll have a storm drain on this side, and we flip over to the ditch that's out there. Might have to make it bigger on the north side, east of Main Street. Included besides the drainage work, if you've ever heard me talk about drainage, they say there's no drainage in Roswell. We always say, yeah, you're driving on it. So part of the increasing the drainage requires some geometric changes to the roadway and make it a little bit wider public curb and gutter so you can actually channel some of the water. We have some drop inlets. I don't know if you ever paid attention to the drop inlets there at the main and Hobson Road. So we'll have to relocate those. But as we're changing the road and changing the geometry, the geometry at Hobson and Main is also going to change. So while I'm in there widening it, I'm going to go ahead and put in a traffic signal. I got to look at, I have to look at the not only the drainage or roadway, but when you start changing geometry, then you got to start changing the safety. So all that is part of the design that we want done by December 31st, 2024. So then we can advertise in January, uh, depending on the complexity of the plans, open bids in March, awarded in April, start in May of 2024. And then they want this money spent uh, June of 2026. So we're very ambitious. The idea is to get going and rock and roll. And that was one of the reasons only Priest and Nichols out of Texas, a national firm can come in here, survey, confirm all the hydrology, confirm the soil testing, the soil, the soil uh, geotech, uh, the geometry and the roadway capacity, 
the traffic signal intersection safety, all that done in a hurry. And I stand for any questions. Questions? I think we've hammered this thing out quite frequently. Uh, Russ, I've got a couple of questions. Yes, sir. So all that work that the uh, Chavez County flood control people did, does that change this any? You mean two years ago? I don't know. Since the last big flood, uh, they've gone out. Really big let me see you about that. Yeah. Okay, so it doesn't change anything because that's a good question. Because what this drainage was assuming in 1999 2000, the assumption was, and if you can look at the, the drawing, the assumption was that the Hondo River would maintain and be maintained to handle the runoff. So then we would take it over here to the relief route. And there from the relief route, you might get some flow coming over here. But the levee break in 2021, just for simplicity, is not, is not included in this because the assumption was the Twin Reservoir Project and the Honda Reservoir would be maintained to carry whatever characteristics that the Corps of Engineers required. And that's the assumption that was in 1999 and 2000. Oh. After this, there's two dams out there, twin dams. What a surprise. Mm -hmm. One of them has a control gate in them, mm -hmm. and the other one does not. That is correct. So, if we could ever convince the Corps of Engineers, and there have been lots of people trying to get that done, mm -hmm. uh, would that help alleviate this problem? It, it might. It, I mean, theoretically, if you look at this drainage, they're not worried about from the bypass going upstream towards the twin rivers, twin reservoirs. So they're assuming all that is already good. So well, we all know it's not. Well, I know. So this is assuming it is good, and it's not going to do anything to levy breaks again. I mean, what it's going to do, it'll help catch, catch the water and move it out. And it will help, but that's a different problem that's not part of this solution for the localized option. Any further questions? Uh, yes, yeah. so this actually reaches New Mexico 2 up here, right? Uh, Mexico 2? The old Dexter Highway. Right. That would be down here, yeah. Eventually everything gets down there because it passes through there to get to the Pecos. If you see this, this is 285. That's 285. Okay, it says Old Dexter Highway. Yeah, that's the one that goes off south. That's the one okay. back in Samoa. I don't think it's 285. I know. Yeah. Oh yeah, here's here's 285. Here's here's our here's our Raptor Road. That's the Dexter Highway. Okay. So this project goes through uh, the state right away. The so right away on the, it's going to cross it. Yeah, it's going to cross it. And, and uh, but we have to do crossing any right away. DLT, we cannot push any more flow than what they can already have handled right now, and that's the purpose of this detention pond. Probably going to be very deep, and it might end up into a detention pond. Which, and if you read the RP, possibly with some pumps. So when it gets, when everything else dries down, then we could physically turn it on and slowly let it trickle. Okay, but how about what are we doing when it gets down to New Mexico too down there? I don't see it because that flow is also that flow capacity also. Yeah, and, and all we're all we're doing here, if you, if you can read this note, this right here, counselor. Yes, sir. All we're basically doing is cleaning the vegetation. And cleaning up the drainage is already there. Yeah. And I mean, I've seen the ditches. I drove this yesterday and I saw the ditches. And this is a nine million dollar job. It blows me away. But I guess the I, well, and and the, and the thing is, part of Crease and Nichols is that they have their railroad agents 
because even though we have this bird that we inherited from the from the military, and if you look at the 1968, I think 68 maintenance agreement, the railroad maintenance agreement, yeah. all that says it, it excludes grading and drainage. So the way I read it, we have the right to do all this. Sure. The railroad might have a different right, but then that's why we hired Priest and Nichols to so we can actually. It looks like it right. drains pretty good now, though, doesn't it? I mean, I looked at the culverts, I looked at everything. Yeah, and, and that's what I mean. What we're going to do, we're going to pick up everything over here. <laughs> and it's going to be a more concentrated flow. But the detention pond will have to have outlet control so we don't overwhelm what's already there. <laughs> okay. So that's why I'm saying we're going to have to mechanically store the water, detain it, turn on the pumps, and we'll have to wait till the storm's over and then pump up and drain our pond. Because right now there's nothing to control that flow, right? There's nothing to control that flow. And this one doesn't exist either, right? The one up towards the west? Mm -hmm. That little detention pond there doesn't exist yet either. Right? No, and that's, a, that's on private property. Chairman, one more question. Lewis, does this flood a lot already, or? Uh, Hudson flood, flood quite a bit. We've had the railroad tracks uh, taken out of commission. And I'm not saying once the le when the levees broke. I'm saying all time around there. No, we've had it twice. In 2021 and before that, the railroad tracks have washed out with the flow. And then the other thing is this neighborhood. This all drains over here and it comes in over here against the railroad tracks too. So this detention pond would help the housing over there as well. And I'm excited that, you know, with the geometry changes, if you remember what we did from the railroad tracks to 285, when we widened it a little bit, put the shoulders, I'm hoping to have something similar or possibly a three lane road. If I can get a three lane road, and let's say it floods, if I can have at least one lane that people can traverse and then and quote the high water mark. I'd love to have had this yesterday, by the way. Oh, okay. No, it's fine. Oh, uh, thank you, Chair. Yeah, this this drawing I've used already, I think, two years. This is the one that came with it. I just highlighted it today just to answer your question to kind of expedite anything that you might have. We do have a million dollars in the budget for this fiscal year. Okay. This wouldn't be bonded? Uh, next slide. So, just to refresh your memory on the funding, this is Water Trust Board Project 5979 WPF. Funding awarded was 9 million 600,000. 13% of it is low and at 1.2, uh, 87% grant. So what we're trying to do is we projected that we'll do a design a million dollars. I think it's what we projected for this fiscal year. And then the next year we would have that as construction money. That's the million dollars. And I do think of a project of that magnitude, uh, we will draw other contractors from around the state and out of state. Daryl, we can probably get the mountain states, those kind of contractors. That'd be good. So all we're voting on today is the design. Design. So if we got two of these Hobson Road projects tied in the fire? No, if you go back to the slide. We have a brasher. Well, maybe I didn't understand. Uh, well, the, the DOT already did their their geom geometrics only at Hobson and 285. Oh, by the armor, you know it flooded it flooded back there as well. This doesn't. I've got the floor. Thank I you. apologize. So there is an old farm field across. The street pops in there in that corner. Is that where it is? No. It's right here? Yeah, north. Right here? No, north. 
right in there. Who owns that property? Runs clear back to the railroad track there. Yeah, I don't know who the property is, but they already used it as a pit one time. It'd be a heck of a pond. Is there some way we can utilize that? Uh, I can't use this money to buy that, but I agree with your concept. Well, and the runoff that you get up the highway or under the highway there goes down to a retention pond at the end of Hobson Road before it gets to the mm -hmm. railroad. But that would that would make a lot of sense if from there, you know, just leapfrog it to this one and hold it again and keep flowing down the water. Same same theory that we did on Utana. We had the big pond and then the little pond at the golf course just to what we call less in the time of concentration. I would love to look at that, but then I'm gonna have to come back, Mr. Chairman, and ask for capital money to buy property. Uh -huh. And I know things are tough, so. So our part of this whole project is how much again? 1.2, next slide, please. Our match, what we'll be responsible for will be $1.2 million of the 9.6. And I believe that's in your packet. The the loan stuff's in the packet. I believe it's sixty four thousand a year that will come out of the road fund for for how long? Twenty years at a zero point two five interest rate. Is there any penalty for prepayment? I don't think so. I just find it because I've been working on this road and this drainage for a long time. I just find it nicely coincidental with what's coming up in the debate. There it is. There's about the deadness. That's my, I think it's probably past due to get this sucker done. I give you that. Okay. My concern is the payments for the next 20 years. I mean, like I said, when we started, we're we're still using cash reserve to get into the twenty five budget. So maybe increase the cash reserves. Real simple. You quit spending money. I get it. Any other questions, counselors? Not for me. Your turn. No. Scared now. Mr. Chairman, <laughs> no, I'm good. Mr. Kevin, ask him. Go ahead. Go ahead, uh, Mr. Chairman. So, is this is this project something that we absolutely need to do right now? Or is this something we want to do? What was the question? Is this uh, something we need to do right question, now, or please. do we want to want to do it? Well, it's always been recommended. This report came out in 2000, so all I can say City of Roswell and all its parts has not thought we needed it until now when we did go after the money, uh, but now we've already signed an agreement. We're on the hook. And, and so real quick, I apologize, so what are we on the hook for? I mean, is this another grant that we've got and got the study done? And we've already uh, we've already signed the loan agreement. Uh, Councilor Cavan, we've already closed on the loan agreement. This has already been approved. Okay. The whole package has already been approved. Okay. Yeah. And and you know, with any luck, with any luck, and we get outside contractors, the prices might come down, and hopefully we don't spend all our grant. And there is no penalty for not spending all your grant and still completing your project. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Okay, any other questions? Pleasure. Well, Mr. Chairman, I move that we get Recommend the award of RFP 20-013 of the Hudson Flood Prevention Design Project for Trees and Nichols in the amount of $1,050,840. Okay. Is there a second? 
Got a motion and a second. Any other comment? Hearing none, those in favor, say aye. 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 Those, aye. those opposed, show me opposed. Or four to one. Okay, moving along. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Jeff, before you is recommend the award of ITB 24-012 Roswell Inclusive Park Project Phase 2B to Alton's landscape in the amount of $106,687.37, which includes GRT. Uh, to remind you guys, ladies, we had this project bid out twice. And on this portion that we're awarding to Alton, we didn't get any takers. So procurement, if you bid it twice, then you can go solicit uh, quotes. And we did, we got Abraham's and Alton's. Alton's came in uh, the least expensive and he's local. Uh, basically what we're doing, you've all been to the inclusive park, I hope. So this is the one in blue is what's built. What we're gonna do now is this part up here and we're gonna landscape it, irrigation, put some shade structures with, with picnic tables in this part right here. So that's what we're talking about. This contract is going to be the irrigation and landscaping for this. Abraham got the other part of it because we split it up trying to get to get it done. They'll be doing the concrete work and then the the picnic tables with with, with shade in these locations. And the sidewalk coming out here tying it to the walking trail. One of the other discussions we've been having is you look at the as you look at your packet, we're still going to have uh, 248,000. Well, we have 248,000 right now. Take the 106, we'll have some change left. We still have a phase three inclusive park, which is 200,000, which I'm hearing two things build this phase three, like we're doing phase two, or come back and retrofit some shade structure next to the play deck. Playground equipment. So roughly 300,000 to, to do either. Can't do both. Question. Is there any money left from the capital outlay or from the fundraising that they did with the uh, Autism Society? Okay, and I understand all the fundraising that was done. Pay for the sign. We've got we've got zero funds from outside sources for this project. Maybe. The only money that's come to this project has been for uh, we have not received any funding from outside project Kiwanis or anybody for the construction itself. Can I ask Barbara. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm part of the Kiwanis Club, and uh, actually we do have funding, and we've already told the city that we know they're they're ready that we can actually put the picnic tables, any of the things that we have. Yes, we do use part of the money that we have received from donations towards the uh, gateway, but they're still we're still fundraising, still trying to get enough money. But we, you know, as soon as the city's ready for us, we're talking with Jim Burris on this. So as soon as the city is ready for you know what they'd like us to put there, then we will have the funding available for and it depends on how many things they want, you know, how many tables or chairs or a bench, I don't think they want benches, they want a fitness table, and they want a trash can, like you need, and they want a, like some kind of a, what do you call those things, a covering for the canopies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the can well, it's not a canopy, yeah, yeah, it's, 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 it's a permanent structure to roll over the, the tables. Exactly. Well, that's what we're doing here, on these phases. Yeah, I mean, but. With trash cans and park benches, and then there's going to be an irrigation system, grass, and trees. So yes. today, all I'm spending is grant money. So no city money. Oh, there's no city money. It's just no money. Okay. Um, I'm restricted to to the grant money for this project. So this quote from a Alton's includes the picnic tables and everything else. No, they're the, they're the irrigation system, the trees, and the landscaping. Abraham Construction, which you've already awarded. Is for the concrete structure and the sidewalk. The picnic tables and the picnic, and the picnic tables and and what they is so you have your picnic table. It's kind of like a three quarter awning. So it's not just a straight. 
Like Can the ones be. in White Sands, maybe? Yeah. Yeah. So, I guess, are you guys going to work with Kiwanis to get the picnic table? That offer just has never come to me. Okay, I'll follow up with Kiwanis then. Maybe we can come back around. That's all I have. Let me ask a question. Okay, so if we approve this, and then how do you do a donation back to this project? Because they're what we're doing is part of this is that we're going to do the picnic tables. They say they're willing to do the picnic tables, but we don't know how much money they've got. How do you do that, Ms. Davis? If Kiwanis decides to give a certain dollar amount of, of revenue, then we'd put it in a donation account specific to this project, and we would spend it out of that donation account. Okay, so it's not a problem. Nope. And, and, and Council Corner, we already have all this stuff itemized when we did. So they have 10 bucks and the picnic table is 10 bucks. They just take the one. Well, I mean, they, they may have enough to read, probably not the correct term, but to donate for maybe three picnic tables, maybe four, maybe one. I don't know. I don't know how much money to take up to give us on this project, but if it's not a problem, we'll get what we can get. And then if that does happen, and that just adds to what my phase three would be, because that would that would be savings on the grant. And all we're using is grant money. And how much after we do this? How much the grant is going to be left? Uh, let's see, two four minutes by May, one fifty eight. Plus two hundred on phase three grant three hundred fifty eight thousand. When does when does the grant expire? Two years. Two years from now. I think we're in the second year of the four year. I mean, and we already have it designed. I mean, what's come up now is uh, there's concerns for canopies within the within that. So basically, how you would instruct me go in there. Drill the hole, drop it, build your canopies. We haven't done those uh, during the design phases. There was a design that had that, but then the the design assumption was how often, how many months do we really need it versus the cost? So, sure. Uh, Lewis, I think you brought up that there was a uh, issue with the water out there. The water out there Did it ever get resolved. It got resolved last week, and then I got called Sunday that it wasn't working again. I do know that once I go to work, I'm going to have Alton's take a look at it. Still, it's a warranty issue, is it not? It's a warranty issue. They've been out here twice, but I think there's. I think somebody else has gone in there and tried to fix it, and it didn't help. I know it was working last week. Sunday I got calls from citizens saying they were pushing the button and it wasn't working. So the contractor has not been responsive this week to go out there and fix it? No, not this week. The owner came down the following uh, last week. Yeah. Greg Neal came down. We know Greg. He's using the local sub. Yes. Rhodes has never responded. He never did respond. No, sir. Thank you for the information. Yes, sir. Any other questions? What's your pleasure? Chairman, yeah. I'd like to make a motion to recommend the award of ITB 24-012 Roswell Inclusive Park Project Phase 2B to Alton's Landscape in the amount of 100687 and 37 cents. And uh, that includes the GRT. Consent. To the consent agenda. Second. Any further comments? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes 5 0. Thank you, Councilman. On the lodger's tax. 
Good afternoon, Mr. Chair and committee members. Um, today, I come to you uh, to ask for consideration to approve Eastern New Mexico State Fair Rogers Tax Funding Request to the City Council in the amount of $47,020. That is a reimbursement of 50% of eligible expenses at $94,040. Um, the Eastern New Mexico State Fair is an annual six day event. The fair begins with the parade on Monday and closes Saturday night after the closing of the carnival. Um, the fair operates on opening day and closing days from noon to midnight and Tuesday through Friday from four to midnight. The mission of the fair is to educate as well as entertain. This event was voted on at the Occupancy Tax Board with a vote of three to zero at their May 21st, 2024 meeting. Um, the Eastern New Mexico State Fair was awarded 45,000 by City Council for fiscal year 23 and paid out 24,249 and 93 cents in eligible expenses. Um, they were awarded 44,500 for fiscal year 2024 and paid out $38,908 and 11 cents in eligible expenses. And then I have Adrian Ragsdale here with us from Eastern New Mexico State Fair for any questions. Just see. Okay. Yeah, I'm just available for questions. Oh. Yeah, she's here for questions. Questions. Yeah, I, I, you know, the the award last year was for forty five thousand. Uh, you're asking for well, and you get half of that, uh, but you've doubled your request this year. What's creating the increase in that request? Because you'd asked for forty five thousand previous year. That's for half. Yeah. So it's not really you know, we paid out twenty four thousand according to your. You asked for forty five thousand, and we pay out half of that amount, which is twenty four thousand, right? Twenty twenty three. Yeah, twenty twenty four was forty four five. So yeah, the twenty four thousand two hundred forty nine. I got you. Was, you only you only spent twenty four of the award. Yeah, yeah, okay. that was what was um, paid out in eligible expenses. Okay. So for the lodgers tax funding request, it is um, it has to meet the, the qualifications of the of the lodgers tax, um, which is for marketing purposes only. And so some of the invoices that were sent in weren't eligible. Make them eligible. We're trying. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she did really. They did really good this year. They got close to the forty-five. They got to thirty-eight this year. This last year. Okay, answer my question. Any other questions? <laughs> Um, what if I don't, I don't know if any requests, police or anything like that is that included in here, or is the city actually helping in this year? So the security and police is covered under the eligible expenses. Yes. Okay. Other yeah, questions? The only thing that's not covered in it is the um, the rental of the equipment, like the barricades and the barrels and things like that. Uh, much pleasure. Mr. Chair, I move that we consider recommendation of approval of the Eastern New Mexico State Fair Lodges tax funding request to City Council in the amount of $47,000.20, a reimbursement of 50% of eligible expenses at $94,040. Second. Got a motion to second. Any Stay on consent? consent. On consent, please. Okay. Any other comments? Hearing none, those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Pass it five zero. Is that consent? Yes. Okay, moving right along. Thank you. We're talking about youth wrestling next. Yep. The next one is um, recommendation of approval of the Crash and Clash Youth Wrestling Tournament Logic Tax Funding Request to the City Council in amount of one thousand two hundred and fifty. That is a reimbursement of fifty percent of eligible expenses at two thousand five hundred. So this is a new um, event for Rogers Tax. This is their first year requesting funding. Uh, this item was voted on at the Active Occupancy Tax Board meeting with a vote of three to zero at their May 1st, 2024 meeting. Uh, the estimated attendance is 1,500 to 2,000, and anticipated hotel rooms is 200 plus. I have Ms. Jadon Spear here for questions. Questions. Okay, no questions. What's your pleasure? Mr. Chairman. Sir. I move that we place on the consent agenda the recommendation to approval of the Crash and Clash Youth Wrestling Tournament the Lodgers Tax Funding Request in the amount of $1,250. Second. 
A motion a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. Those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes 5 0. Moving on, 186. And this is normally Mr. Glenn, but he is tied up in the other room uh, on a very important phone call. <clears throat> very important phone call. Uh, so, what this is is the warehouse inventory. Uh, if I get off key, Miss Davies, you just round me up, okay? So what happens is the warehouse purchases this stuff for everybody to use. And once the department comes in and requests the items in their invoice for that item. And it's been a pretty good system, near as I can tell, the last several years. And so we've seen this before. Every time I've We've had since I've been elected, we see this over every year. So is that is that a fair breakdown on that? Yeah. It's to stock the warehouse. Yeah. That's all it is. Well, Chairman, if I may. I have a question. Uh, I have a question. Go you cut the floor. Um so all this is uh in a, like a suspense account or something, and it's all in inventory until a certain department uh, purchases it, and then it hits their budget then? Right. Okay. It's on, it's on a, the balance sheet. Um, on the balance sheet, you know, right. As inventory for the warehouse. The inventory. And they expense it out. And is all the material in there on a perpetual average, or is it just, I mean, like say we bought a bunch of faucets today for 50 bucks, and then last year there were 40 bucks. So does it, when they expense amount, is it on a perpetual level? Yes. yes. Oh, great. Perfect. Thank you. You have any questions? Yes, I do, Mr. Chairman. I would like to know why we are taking Baker utility supply from 202,000 up to 375,000. Why are we taking Hoare and Maine to 375,000 when the prior year was only 35, 36,000? I can't answer those questions. I can't answer that either. I can't those answers before I approve this. Okay, let's move on to the next time. Uh, internet. Oh, you can call for a vote. I'll just be a no. Well, uh, no. He's in the building. He's just tied out. Okay. Well, I just think that we need an explanation of why he wants to spend more money with these people and what's he buying. I, I, I don't. That's fine. Okay. Okay, so we got to go. Just skip that item for a moment. Maybe he'll come up for error in a minute. Uh, that meeting was scheduled to go for an hour, and it's been going on for an hour. Maybe he'll he'll show up. Um, internet and eleven. Uh, like you're done. We're talking about TSL services. You gotta go. I'll go check. I wouldn't go in there forever. Yeah. Oh, is he? Yeah. Well, drag him in here. Let's go back and get this one done. Hard drag. Well, I think they're trying to fix a lot more water stuff. That was my assumption looking at that, but that's a great question. It's a large increase. Yeah, on that one, especially. Okay. Okay. All right. Skip this item. Let's talk about the city's internet. Yes, sir. Our expense is over fifty thousand dollars. I mean, we get more for city policy. There's the internet. There's some networking equipment that we use. A work work that Riley's a work order system and facilities maintenance and all the water department use. We have our other that we use. Such a square is what fire and police use. Both Fargo's the printer leases we have. And code three is for basically for dispatch. It's under my budget, so it didn't get billed out to dispatch, but it's for their maintenance for all the towers and the radio systems. It's they're all under contract. We've just multiple times it's been here. So this is 
just money to continue the contract. Correct. It was all budgeted, just over sixty thousand dollars. Yeah, how much does this total up to? One million three hundred twenty thousand dollars. Okay. Big hunk. And that's fast. And it's in <laughs> and it's in your budget, right? Correct. Okay. Question. Um the plateau, does that include uh, running the fiber to the PD for the real crime center too, or is that going to be extra? Um, that was extra, that's already been paid for. Oh, okay. That's good. Nice. Mm -hmm. Jeff, paying for that on their budget. Jeff, and, are these uh, same as prior year numbers? Uh, well, they've gone up about 10 or 15% because they're all subscription services, so every year they go up. And Jane, do we take these costs like the Tyler and we charge them back to the enterprise funds or is that a part of our administrative fee that we charge back? Um, no, ever, uh, utilities, insurance and computer, uh, we pulled all into um, finance and we're gonna pay it out of finance except the enterprise. Uh, and the enterprise funds will pay their portion. Well, they will? Yes. Okay. I didn't know whether that was gonna be a direct charge or whether that's gonna be your your administrative fee or whatever you call yeah, that. No, no we, we left it in there because for audit purposes, they're going to want to see those expenses and not run it through as an indirect cost. Okay. Hold in Texas. Okay. Welcome back, Counselor. Okay. Is that water you take care of? Uh, yeah. We're on IT right now. What we skipped was the warehouse inventory. Because there's a question posed that I didn't, I had no, no clue. Okay. Got it. Got it. So anybody got questions on the IT? <laughs> What's your pleasure? Mr. Chair, I move that we consider approval for the cost of the internet and transparent land TLS service and the following software maintenance licenses for IT to the consent agenda. Second. Motion to second. Any other comments? Those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes 5 0. Now we're going to talk about budget adjustments. Tony. This is yours. Yes, Mr. Chairman, um, committee members, agenda item number 12 is consider approval of resolution 24-XX, approving year-end budget adjustment for the fiscal year ending June 30th, 2024. The finance department is requesting a budget adjustment for line items in Exhibit A. These adjustments are for various grants and other departmental adjustments. Revenues in the amount of $2,741,000. $279.10. Expenses in $1,396,715.37. Okay. And various transfers. For what? Various transfers between funds. I was just trying to zero everybody. Yes. Okay. Questions? Yeah, I do have questions. Okay. So, Lost the screen, it's okay. Right. Maybe. <laughs> well, we got IT sitting here, so. And we just renewed them, so. <laughs> I think we're still online. We just don't have the documents. Is that true? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Hi, so we are increasing our revenues by 2.7 million, which I mean, 1.3 is 1.4 is the OPF money, and that's just going to push it out. Right. And so we, in essence, have increased our revenues by 1.3 million versus what we originally. It was original in the budget, yes. Yeah. So that's a good thing. Right. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah, we'll that, another. that we've got more revenue than, than we have. So we just need another seven million dollars for those. <laughs> well, <laughs> more. Well, when we get into the others, we'll talk about that too. But okay. Uh, so okay, that just answers my question that we 
we in, in essence have $1.3 million more in revenue than we had originally booked. So. And that's what most of the expense was, was the opioid fund. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. What, any other questions? What's a pleasure. Mr. Chairman. Go ahead. I move that the place on the consent agenda the approval of the resolution 24XX approving year end of budget adjustments for the fiscal year ending June 30, 24. Got a motion? Second. Got a second. Any further comments? Okay, hearing none, those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, passes five zero. We're going to continue working on our agenda, approval of minutes, non action items, and whatever else is left. And we can make our warehouse in the future before we get done. Approval of minutes. Much pleasure. Your turn, buddy. Oh. Oh, Juliana, he's one. He's not going to do it. He may do a second, but he's not going to make the motion. No, I we just can't. Can't. We could see if Will Cabrin's right would make a motion. Do you want to make a motion to approve the next meeting? Yep. What was the date on that? What was the question? What was the date on that? What was, what was the date of our last time? June 6th. Okay, I'll make a motion to approve minutes from the uh, June 6th. Kansas City Council Finance Committee meeting. Second. Got a motion and a second. Any corrections or deletions or any of them? All right. Those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Passes by zero. Okay, so we got that done. Non action items. Talk about the finance. Okay. Like proceeding yeah. cannabis, lodger tax, and convention. Go ahead. For GRT in June, we received $4,296,782. So for FY24, we received a total of $50,004,713 compared to the $42,000 that, $42 that was budgeted. So it's a 19.06% variance over budgeted versus actual. Um, in public safety, we have a total of $2,726,772.30. And there's the graphs that you can see GRT actual, the three year trend, and actual versus budgeted. Now, while you're on that slide, I want everybody to remember that that spike, and again, correct me if I'm wrong, was the $2 million additional money. It's going to be recurring, but not at that level. Right. Not anywhere close to that level. Go ahead, <clears throat> Mr. Chairman. I want everybody to take a look at that because you know you look at it and say, oh, we got fifty million dollars. We didn't get fifty million dollars that goes to the GRT. We have two point seven million dollars went into to public safety. We had two point two million dollars approximately was that a catch up number if I recall. So that left us with forty five million dollars in GRT, which is flat. We did not have an increase in GRT. Uh, and what was our budget number for fiscal 25 that we used for GRT? Do you recall without those? I'm just concerning 42. that did we use the 42 or did we use the 45? Um, I just we used me. 42. We're on a downward trend yep. on our GRT. Yep. And I don't want people to look at that and go, oh my God, you got $8 million more than you budgeted. We didn't get $8 million more we budget. We got $3 million more than the budget. Um, budget for FY25 is $52 million, but that includes... Um, public service. Yeah, $8 million in 
public service. So yeah, public basically the 40, by 44 million is it's going to be budget. close. If we stay on this same trend where we're at, we're going to be a really close budget without any uh, reduction uh, that we're going to continue to use cash reserves. Which is a big problem. Which is a big, big problem because at some point in time you run out of cash reserves. So uh, I know we approved that budget, but it, I think it's going to have to be looked at relatively, maybe on a quarterly basis, not on a six month basis to see where we're at. Can we get a report that takes out that mm -hmm. spike? Can we get a report that takes out that spike that, that shows us the true numbers? Well, you just, uh, my suggestion is to take, how much was it? Two million? 2.2 2 million, wasn't it? 2.2. 2. 2. 2 off of your calculations because although it's not true gross receipts for planning purposes because you got that spike you just need to keep that in the back of your mind and deduct it off because we're not going to see that money yeah. again it's a one-time deal one-time deal and so what i'm saying is you're just going to come in at 45 million dollars yep is what you came in at which is the same as what fiscal year 23 was because we passed the, the public safety tax and you take that out. So we were just flat with 23 and then you take an inflation rate. We didn't even keep up with inflation nope. on our gross receipts. Did not keep up with that. So Mr. Chair, I would, would make a recommendation that we have budget review every quarter uh, if that's possible. I'll try. <laughs> we try to get that done. We haven't been. Well, we, I know with staff has been very end of the year activity going on, budgets going on. But I think if we could take a look in October for the first quarter and sometime in February for the second quarter to see where we're at, I think we've got to keep a close eye on financial activity. So that's just my, my request. Oh, that's okay. true. I'm with you on that. We'll, we'll try to get it done. Hopefully, we'll get things on a more even keel. Uh, so, let me see here. I had a question. So, maybe I'm just not very bright today. Where are we on our or, Are you looking for editorial comment with us then? No. Okay. I'm just wondering what the uh, public safety tax is doing. I don't see that. Oh, it's on uh, right here. Oh, there it is. Down here. Where it's combined. Two point seven million. Okay, got it. I just didn't, couldn't see it. I guess I need some new cheaters. <laughs> Okay, 2.7, and this is as of? That's from inception to end of June. To June. Through June? Yes. Okay, so at that rate, it's going to take us, assuming that it stays at that rate, will be next year before we can spend that money. Maybe a little quicker. It's going to take all the year because if you take where we're at, pull out the ambulance service fee for yep. last year or for the fiscal year 24. Pull it out again for 25. 25. And it's gonna, we'll, we'll get there, but it's going to be really, if it stays on these numbers that we're at, I ran those projections. For, okay. And it's going to be close that we will then be at the $5 million number probably in April or May. Okay. So don't look for any, any relief to the budget. So no. the money we're paying to AMR now, that's not coming out of the public's, or it, it is coming is. out of the public. Okay. Yep. So that's what's hurting it. Well, that's all that's coming out. Yeah. Okay, we ready to go to cannabis? Let's go to cannabis. So for June cannabis, we received 29,406. For the year, we received a total of $348,677. Um, we received 154,000 over budget and 79.41 percent. Questions? Okay. 
Roger's tax. Good afternoon, Chair and committee members. I present to you the volume tax update for April 2024 activity collected in May of 24. We got one hotel that did not report on time. The star data reported a 66.6% occupancy rate. And the ADR percentage change this month was a negative 4.4 year over year. Next slide. The April 24 activity based on May 24 remittance occupancy is at 56.5% with $115,351 collected. Next slide. And the April activity based on a May 2024 remittance for the convention center bed fee has occupancy at 56.5% with $61,840 for I stand for any questions. Questions? Have we made any headway of the B and Bs? That was something that we were just sitting down and starting to tackle, and then my last couple of weeks have been my last. Oh, I mean, you were <laughs> busy. I'll get back to that. You were busy. Uh, oh yeah, that busy. Yeah. 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 You were assisting with our our neighbors to the west, and uh, appreciate all the work that you all did. Yeah. Uh, it's a lot of pretty simple. Yeah. And. Uh, Leave it go with that. I think most everybody's tried to go home, although with floods and stuff, we may get some return visitors. I don't know. Um, but that's not my department. We welcome them if they need our assistance. Okay. And I think that our, there's a possibility that our uh, solid waste is going to go assist in the cleanup of that. It's still working its way through the system. Um, so we're going to send a couple of grapple of trucks up there, maybe. Yeah, see what they ask for. Uh, we're just glad to be able to help our neighbors. Jeremy, yeah, I mean, we did find a place to store all that up in Redotes and Mescalero versus your area. They're trying to bring everything to you. FEMA controls all this. So we're working with the state and that won't collect that down. As opposed to getting the permit. Anybody cheat? Allow us to bring some of that to Greenex, but we have fairly changed the conditions. Mm. At the department, we're trying to keep it up there. That's great. And we are. Uh, Mescalero already gave us a canyon to put a bunch in, and then Ridosa is going to free up some space there. Okay. We're trying to not utilize the capacity. Well, there's a lot of moving parts in this field. Yeah. So we'll do what we can. All we can do. Chairman, I think Abraham has something else to say. So it's a couple of, uh, like I said, uh, committee chair, it's been a lot of moving parts. We have a line saw, we're trying to protect that, we're trying to keep that for a while to hold. We have area for a ton line, some degree, for a very specific party. And it is approving exemption to extend our tonnage per day, per year. It's pretty expensive. Um, We'll go out and out to you. We're just finalizing the approval from the program manager and in the chief to go ahead and accept it all. So we're still waiting on FEMA to sign off on the agreement. Uh, yeah, we need Chair. Sorry, there's a lot of room there. Okay. Thank you. Okay. That's a good thing. It's going to keep it up there. Yeah. My gosh. Yeah. That's, that's my understanding. The current plan is, but like I said, it's still in flux. Big time. Maybe we'll find out more about We're all in it to Mescalero right now. What may I do for you, Councilor? Well, as soon as we get finished with this item, we're going to get back to your item number 10. Okay. And the question was why the big increase of the two particular vendors? Okay. Okay. You pull out the vendors. Yeah, we have questions about on 186. Get to that page. 186. And probably. Yeah. Uh, you're asking for approval for Baker Utility for 375000 when the 
fiscal year just ending, you had used only 202,000, which is 173,000 on increase in authorization. And then core and main, you're asking for 375,000 in authorization when you only use 36,000, 339,000 increase. Um, resource wise, you're asking for 200 when it was 160. I just want to know why, what these increases are due to. Okay. And what materials are you buying to? So, Baker Utility, Core and Main, and Ferguson Waterworks. Those are the three uh, state approved vendors that we have state contracts with. That's where we purchase a majority of our underground supplies valves, uh, valves, pipes, all that kind of stuff. We've had a significant increase again in pricing. We have also had a significant increase in the number of valves around town that we have found broken that we need to dig up and replace. Some of these valves, you know, you, you got a 12 inch valve that's $10,000. Right. We have a whole bunch of those that need to be done. We also have the new infrastructure reinvestment monies that will hopefully be coming in and some of that will be going to our crew that is actually gonna be doing some work out in the field. So we need to be able to purchase the parts and stuff to do that work. It just was a large increase, like on Corn Main, you only did $35,000 with them. They're the main supplier of our brass. And if you look at the, the purchase orders that we have outstanding with them, there's a whole bunch of, there's money there. That's all that we actually purchased with them this this year. Right. But they are the major supplier of our brass products. Okay. Just curious of why the increase was versus your current fiscal or previous fiscal year to this current fiscal year. So are we behind? We've got stuff ordered and they haven't been able to ship because they don't have them on the shelf, so to speak. Yes. And I I provided that information. I don't know if it got into the packet or not on our uh the reasons for our uh, purchase orders that are getting carried over but we have we have brass stuff that we purchased or we put an order in clear back in 2022 and we still have not received it we have orders that we have put out that are 22 months out some of these valves that we need to, to purchase and such same thing they're we need to get we need to get our stock in place so we can start doing the projects that we're going to start budgeting for. Because if we don't, we can't be like the one of those things that we ran into over on Atkinson, where we're doing projects and then we don't have the parts to do it, and we have to order the parts and they're they're three months out. Right. We need to figure out where we're going with this and have the stuff in stock. Yeah. for certain projects. Gotcha. Mr. Chairman, may I make a comment? Sure. We're bidding the RAC uh, waterline phase two. And I'm already being told that the 14 inch water valves are 14 to 18 weeks after the contractor has been told that, he, that the uh, project's been awarded. And then like on our carryovers, the problem if, if we don't if we order something and then we don't carry over that purchase order and we have we cancel the purchase order then they cancel the order and we lose the place in line and go to the the very big and you very get back the, of the line and you get the new price yes versus the old price yep. you got locked in yeah that's correct Okay. And that's all I'm asking for is the flex. The, the warehouse guys get, need a little bit more flexibility to yeah. build up our stock. No problem. You answer my, my question. Uh, is this just the ones that are on our price agreement or our contract? There's that's it and the whole nation. I mean, I know we're we're here to just do business with our contracted price agreements. This is throughout the whole nation, though. As far everybody's as having the same problem. Okay. You, you it's, like, it's like computer chips for your Ford. Yeah. 
you know, and, your and Lewis can back me up on this. If you read the trade trade magazines, yeah, everybody's got the same. Everybody's drum. beating the same drum. Okay. And the contractors are even reaching outside their local vendor. They're reaching out the uh, east coast, west coast, looking for parts. Okay. We so not getting any better. It ain't gonna get better. We've yeah. had our vendors call us and ask us if we have parts that we want to sell back to them. Yeah, I'm sure. And they're they're willing to pay the current price. Unfortunately, we can't do it, but you know what? Plus 10%. <laughs> Chance to make a little money, we can't let it go. Well, it's gonna not going to make any money because you're going to have to replace it at some point in time yeah, later. You know, that's yeah, you're better to just, just keep it your stock. Keep it. Keep it. And as soon as, as soon as you let it go, then that's when you need it. Okay. All right. So are you looking for a motion now? Well, I was just counter Kevin. Are you still on the line? I guess not. Okay, so just us three finish out. Let's go. What do you want to do? Okay, Mr. Chairman, or you want to take this your turn? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to put this on the consent agenda um, for the consideration and recommending the approval of the warehouse inventory purchasing authorization request by Mr. Glenn. Okay. In the amount of one three two five. In the amount of. One million three hundred twenty-five. Three hundred twenty-five dollars. Second. Thank you. Got a motion second. Any other comments? Hearing none. Those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Obviously not. That's just three zero. Thank and you. we'll and we'll keep the same deal that we've always had with you guys. If something weird comes up, we'll definitely come in and tell you what's going on. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Flynn. I need to visit with you about something. Are you going to leave? I'll go over here and finish this and then I'll come back. Okay, thank you. Okay, public library. Any questions for librarians? No, I'm just gonna say, Edith, if you're getting really close on your plan learn area, but you're yes, not I far have. off. Yes, I And have. you're probably not gonna have to wait till 27. Well, I do because I've, I've taken that funds and I've, committed them to the act and sign agreement. So, um, but we're doing, the plan is the, we'll finalize the architectural plans and we'll take some of our donation money that we have um, in a CPA use that. Um, once we have that, those plans in place, then there's, um, we'll be possibly using some geo bond money. If I can, if I can convince the state to keep the debt to purchase some of our equipment. Mm -hmm. So that we don't have a crunchy timeline, um, and then the third year we would break ground. So I'm I'm excited you got close to your number re relatively soon. Yes. Yeah, yes. you've done a good job. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Okay, museum. Questions. I will also add that construction is continuing. The terrazzo floor is like phenomenal. That just finished about a week and a half ago. And um, all I saw that what's not my Twitter for is that to invite people make sure you can come to the dedication for the rocket sculpture that Josh Berry has completed. That'll be on Friday at 8 30 p.m. Um, the, the tree that's right in front of that thing, is that thing gonna stay there or is that tree gonna get trimmed? Councilor uh, Hildebrand, I have not uh, reviewed or addressed the tree, but I will. When you drive down Main Street, it is, that tree blocks it. You can't see it at all. Okay. I couldn't say you can't see it at is all. It on the but it's very side. It's it's on the it, east side. The east on the east side of, the, of where it's situated. And I don't know whether we can touch that tree, whether that's a state highway department okay. issue or not. No, I think it's in our right. It's yeah. in our right away, not theirs. So anyway, it is. Can you well, get that tree removed? No, <laughs> we may build it, but you guys do the maintenance. Yeah. <laughs> Or maintain the, you maintain the well, branches off yeah. of it. We want to give you your tree back. <laughs> oh, it's in somebody's name. <laughs> I'll buy that. But you, you, call you, just, you, know, you just yeah. can't see that. I drove by there the other day, and you just can't see that when you drive by. So I think the exciting thing is they're going to light this thing. They're going to light this candle, so to speak. Um, yeah. That will be very exciting uh, okay. because I've seen a little bit of that, and uh, pretty impressive. Well, yeah. it's lit up at night. I haven't seen the lit up. Oh. Yeah. Okay. 
Department Report Go. Mr. Chair, I'll just mention on that. I know the report's in the packet, but I'd like to thank uh, TJ and Amanda and their entire crew at the Visitor Center. Uh, went on Friday afternoon late and worked till late Friday night. They inventoried all the merchandise in the pro shop, uh, got all that stuff done before the end of the uh, fiscal year, uh, which was a big deal to get done. But I appreciate them doing that. And as you can tell from the report, Paper Golf Course is doing phenomenal. And, and it was uh, with no disruption to golf operations. Uh, my understanding, Mike's understanding, is NIMI course was closed that day. Uh, so we had a full house. And anytime you drive by the golf course, check out the parking lot because it's jam packed. They were closed to do inventory, but we didn't close to do inventory. They went and uh, Amanda gave them yeah. done it at night. And their crew and Tim, and they just done a phenomenal job. And, I think for the first time we have actual actual number of merchandise and uh, and everything in the building. So fantastic profit. Yeah, I'm hearing good reports. So uh, it's Mr. Chair, I just want to say this is a great report on breaking down the revenues for the golf course over there. And you know, you look at the golf carts, thirty three thousand, those things pay off for less than a year. Yeah. That we paid for, and so uh, you know, I, I like this report the way they're doing now. It's very beneficial. So, and I understand we're on for a record month though in June. That's exactly right, no, Mr. So, substantially higher than this number. Been booked in uh, tournaments for the last couple of weekends. I know there's no tee times and weekends no more. That's a good thing. We've got new tournaments coming in and new yes. tournaments coming in and the golf course is amazing right now i mean amazing it is just you guys have done a great job and this is just an anecdotal but every person that i've talked to my brother plays a lot of golf uh, several of my friends play a lot of golf i've gotten texts i've gotten people on the street come up to me and say your course looks amazing we're so happy you got over there um he's a, a teacher uh, by heart and they're just, they're thrilled with them. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Okay, moving on to public affairs. Does that have any questions? My report stands as good. Yeah. Okay. Let's go to the business person. Amanda's not here right now, but if you have any questions, I can ask them. Yeah, you this chat. Sure. Uh, what are we doing with merchandise over there? Are we letting that inventory slowly dwindle down? Are we replenishing up? What are we doing? In budget, in, in terms of this year's fiscal budget, we've slashed uh, that inventory allocation by half. Um, so it wasn't 60,000, I think we're at 30,000. Um, and yes, we are dwindling down those those inventories. Um, the idea being at the moment in time was that we were taking that visitor center out to RFP. Um, that uh, has failed uh, twice now, um, but we are still bringing in. Uh, yes, sir. Where are we at? Are we having dialogue with anyone? The RFP was not. Uh, we yes, have no responses to the RFP. We had one response on the second attempt uh, for the RFP. That was the Hispano Chamber of, of Commerce. So we have had subsequent discussions with the Hispano Chamber as well as the Roswell Daily Record uh, in terms of a proposal. Uh, whether that's splitting costs, uh, reducing costs, um, and working a joint venture. Um, so we have had discussions, but <laughs> with UFO Festival and Russell Dale Records uh, involvement there, um, we haven't had any recent discussions. Thank you for the state. Yeah. Good. Any other comments, questions? Okay, we'll move on to Main Street Roswell. Has been sitting patiently. I live here. Barbara, executive director, and Cam Ford. She is our, our treasurer. We provided for you what you requested in the last meeting. We provided the property loss for both the uh, 2023 and the
have a misleading financial statement. You know? Well, it, if you take their January through June 15th, it makes it look like they've got a tremendous amount of profit here, but they've booked in all their income, but they haven't booked in their expenses for the UFO festival. So don't let this financial statement mislead you to think that they're $71,000 for the good for the first six months. That will instantly change here after you have your UFO festival, correct? And when will we see you again for your for your request? I don't know. I guess that's my question. When will I come back in regards to- You can come back anytime. I got you, Mr. Chairman. I need to get back on the agenda. Sure. Uh, so <clears throat> Oh, yes, uh, the next one. We can't, I mean, they can get all the work done. When can they come back for the request? Next month, it has to go, as soon as the council can act on it as well as the Next month. So we can see that this committee. It's the next committee meeting. Next August, in August. Okay. So Just one more. I think the council will can approve it in August. Okay. If it gets out of here. <laughs> I'm, I'm an optimistic soul. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, by then, we'll see what it really looks like with the expenses. It'll be a close call whether the other books finished up, that, but they sh might be able to by August. Thursday of the month, so. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Expected expenditure for the first 90 days of FY25. Further lengthy, yes. Pickleball sidewalk, number one. That can be done, I think. So if you drive by on 8th Street, uh, you will notice the work is being done. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, the sidewalk is going in. Uh, what will follow is a fence along either side uh, that should drive membership at our adult uh, center facility, which just anybody that's not a member of the adult center, it's only 29 bucks for a year. Uh, you get all the great things that are going on over there and soon to come pickleball as well. Okay. <clears throat> so does anybody have everybody here? May not have. Uh, have any questions about any of these line items as you go through this rather lengthy list? Here I'm trying to understand what this list is supposed to be telling us. Because I don't see a total line. Yeah. I looked at this list and then. What's this trying to tell me? Well, this is expected purchases. Over 60,000. next 90 days. Yeah. What's our goal? I'm not taking my shoes off. You wouldn't like that? Well, <laughs> I mean, trying to get a handle on what this information, how I'm supposed to absorb it and do what am I supposed to do with it? Well, and I'll so tell you. Kind of like that uh, financial statement we were just looking at in uh, January. It can be a little misleading on the front end of the year. That's typically when you want to do all your POs and try to get as much knocked out as possible. Um, so, and typically you'd see a decline in those uh, as you drop off uh, later in the year. So, the first 90 days, the first quarter of the year, uh, I would say is going to be a skewed to the high side. As far as cash expenditures go. Yes, sir. Okay, but I see some of these, and these are not all going to happen in the first 90 days. Nope. I concur. The work. Right, because Fraser Nichols is on here for a million fifty. We just approved that today. That billing won't take 90 days. It'll, 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 the request was for POs are going to be issued. Right. So these will be the POs that will be requesting in the first 90 days. These are just purchases, not the expenditure side. Right. There'll be some, there'll be some expenditure, but not the total expenditure. So you'll see like an engineering 
HDR, that's for the sewer design at the, at the air center. Constructor, that's Hop Street, the cell connection. Uh, the mill and field will be in The RAC, that we're gonna open bid this, this month. And all these are the, are the fields that we'll be requesting in the first 90 days. I would just alert the council members to, uh, uh, one of the things we need to watch for is if we go through and expend all of our funds on POs early on uh, with the trick being in mind to come back later to the council and say we need a budget increase or a budget adjustment. Uh, we see that a lot um, here, unfortunately, um, but I want to alert you to it on the front end. Okay. Go. Is that the total 19 million? Yes. But then some of the lines don't have amounts in there, so that's kind of misleading. We don't know what it is. Yeah. Well, this is for primarily our edification, so we can help plan the expenditures of this stuff. But you can see how fast we can do that. Chairman, I, I, when I look at this, I assume these were just price agreements that was that was established, so we could do business for the year. These um, forest tire Hicks automotive. Some of them is. Some of them is. Let's get the shotgun. Well, I didn't see any dollar amount. That's what I said. Well, I understand this is the first time we, I've requested such an item. I'm just trying to understand what, what to do with it. Hang on to it. See what it works. Okay. From the engineering point of view, that's what we're hitting for. Our name is going to start with the new money so we can close it out by the end of the year. Yeah. I think Jenny has to. That's, that's important. I got it. That's oh. Yeah. Mr. Cole, just Sorry. you weren't in here when we talked about the yes. revenue stream, the GRT coming through for this current fiscal year of 25. Did some analysis on those. Forget about coming and asking for increased budget amounts. Because we are going to be, we are flat. If you take out the the one time two point two million dollars that we received, and you take out the public safety monies that we've received, our revenue stream for twenty four was flat with twenty three. So I think the message needs to be: don't think about it. And we've already started to see uh, some uh, rumblings and requests out of other committees for things that have not been in, uh, approved in this year's fiscal year budget, including land over at wastewater uh, that's adjacent to the site. So, uh, all of those come with hefty price tags. So alert the, the well, just making a general statement that if we stay on the trend where we're at, it's going to get a tough time coming out of this committee to get approved for those okay. because we just don't have it. Thank you, sir. Well, and, I, and think, I think you need to take another step further, Councilor. I think we need to go look at our budget in the first quarter, do a detailed review, and maybe cut back on some of this stuff so we can, because there's some stuff that's in that budget that is not. Anywhere close to an emergency measure, and we need to decide. This committee needs to decide what we're willing to fund and what we think we can put off for another year or two, because we're not going to get out of this box in one more budget cycle. It's going to take some work. Yes, sir. It's going to take five, five. My estimate is five years, and I'm not sure that we've made <laughs> serious enough cut for another twenty-five. Well. The thing about it is we're flat with the revenue side, yes, sir. but we've got inflation on the price five percent. So in theory, in whole dollars, we lost we lost ground. Yeah, we did not gain anything in twenty four over the year twenty three. We lost ground. Yep. So that, and what Councillor Corn is saying is, the message needs to be: if your budget is what your budget is. And don't come and ask for, it would be nice to have. It would be, I, we need. Don't blow it, create a crisis that wasn't yeah, there in the first place. Yeah. There is no crisis money. Right. No, we're, we're, we're done. Yes, sir. And 
that message needs to be, well, I think, delivered. If it's not already been delivered, it will continue to be delivered. And I appreciate your support. Yes, yeah. sir. I hate to be that guy, kind of person, but I'm pretty strict when it comes to budgets and revenues and those kind of things. That we're going to live inside those things and don't come ask for more. And the good news is, if we get it right and and we fix the problem ourselves, yeah. Um, then going forward. Everything else comes together. You've built trust. Everything starts to loosen. Now you can move. Right. Thank you, Mr. Cole. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <coughs> okay. Moving on. That's it. That was that place of carryover. That okay, just start off. 226. 227. 226 is the gotcha. Okay, so this is the list of stuff that they're asking to carry over. This the first sheet is funds, and the second is without funds. So this is an open discussion item. We're not going to make any decisions. And probably won't have any questions about it, but there's going to be a point where we're going to have to, I think, um, visit some of these carryover without funds. Don't know that, but I think that it's a possibility. They're already carried over. Okay. Without funds, so. Well, but when they come through, <coughs> you have to look at it. What's Jane? What's the total of this? Don't. Yep. Do you have the totals? Do you have your total sheets? Yeah. I find it here. I want to give them to you because I want carry to over without funds. You're looking at at least fifteen million there. Carry over without funds. In total. Those are items you're going to have to get the current fiscal year budget, correct? Yes. Carry over with funds is twenty million four ninety eight zero thirty six thirty six. Those are with funds. Those are with funds. Twenty million one counselor. Four nine eight zero three six. Okay. Point six. I'm not withholding from you, Jamie, but this is this yesterday deal. And I think the open amount is, is what we need to focus on. Yeah, the carry forward without funds. I got that number here too. Four million. One hundred nine thousand nine hundred and ninety three dollars and thirty nine cents. That seems high for that's carry over without funds. So the open amount is six million. So oh, okay. Excuse me. This, this the open, open amount on carry over with funds is six million five hundred one nine fifty four fifty one. And just for clarification, the open amount is essentially the balance left on the PO. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And for the. Uh, Open amount without funds is one million three oh eight eight seven four seven two. Said one million one million three hundred eight thousand eight hundred seventy four dollars and seven. <coughs> so which were budgeted or not budgeted in the current procedure? Well, they were approved, so I assume that there was money available. The ones that were carried over with funds are mainly capital projects right. that we've approved in budget. The ones that are carried over without funds uh, are just coming off the top of their budget for the year. For the current year, okay. Yes. So, yeah. so when you get the angry phone call from the department head that says, you know, uh, whatever they say, uh, it wasn't in their budget, right. their request. 
Exactly. Yeah. Whose fault is that? Right. We, we knew we weren't going to complete the project. We knew we were going to roll over the PO. We should have budgeted for it. Got to attach funds to that. Right. Yes, sir. It wasn't. Okay. I mean, the biggest item on there is a sweeper out at the airport, 327000 Yeah. And she didn't put that in her current year budget. That was requested. I don't recall the sweeper. It wasn't. Wow. Not That's going to be correct. a tough call. We're not keeping track of her work. going to be a tough call for them because they don't have it. Man, as you know, we've got some hangar assets that need to be repaired. Oh, yeah. And for our assets, regardless of what was or wasn't done in the past, we're going to make our repairs. Play catch up. Okay. Yep. Okay. Okay. I'm sure this is not the last we're going to hear about this. So. No, but you you got a heads up right now, Mr. Chairman. Along kind of these lines, you and Mr. Cole had asked me to talk to some of our vendors that we buy equipment, vehicles, and such from. They are willing and have been doing what they're calling letters of intent to purchase instead of purchase orders. And what that requires is that the council actually take action, say, yes, we're going to purchase this. Letter of intent goes to them. They place the order and everything. And then as soon as the vehicle is manufactured and gets a VIN number and has a ship date, then they want the purchase order. I'm okay with that as long as it's in your budget. Yeah, but it's an, it's just a way not, not to have a carryover. Yeah, the trucks I'm looking at, they're... 18 to 24 months out. So I don't have to tie up that money for right. that long. We just right. have to know that we're going to have it in that year's budget to pay for it. Right. it gives him some flexibility. Yeah. Go ahead and place his, not order, but put his name on the list for that equipment. Um, and then uh, we're not violating procurement code by not having an approved purchase order in place ahead of it. That's two years out tying the money up. They said they've been doing that with several municipalities around, and, and the state's been doing it with them too. So, but what we got to watch is is somebody keeping a tally on how many of those letters of intent? Because I don't want 50 million show up and we got but we're 10. Not obligated. I know, and we got 10. So, it's kind of like the vendors that. Uh, we put a purchase order in with them. They order the, the merchandise. Somebody comes in at a higher bid and snakes it out from under us. And all of a sudden they say, well, oh, too bad, so sad, even though you had a purchase order. It gives us that same kind of flexibility on our side. So how would you prefer to keep track of this so we can see possibly which first year it's going to come due? Oh. That I have a comment. Uh, I don't know what the big deal is about having a purchase order set out there. Uh, if the communication is good, um, then we can budget it the next year, and the purchase order is the way to keep up with that. Uh, I prefer it that way. I would too, uh, because I'm not sure that certain uh, auditors would not find that as a procurement violation. They might. Yeah. So, um, we do it with capital projects all the time. Uh, just need to know that it's being carried over. And really, it, it's, uh, I think the attorney will, will defer to depends. Yeah, so it depends on whether it's a good agreement and the fund that's coming out. So, water in for if, so if this were warehouse would be different, but for just water, it's a special fund for a special purpose under state law. So, the basement act is just big of work. Uh, can't do it with general fund departments, but we could do it with sanitation and uh, solid waste and water for sure. and airport. Uh, we're having a two year PO. It might be an auditor issue, but it's not a legal issue as far as. Well, and my only funds. issue with uh, the enterprise funds is we do have enterprise funds that don't make any money. So the other fund carries it. Uh, Abraham deals with that. We, I just did an entry to cover landfill for uh, fiscal year 24 out of sanitation's budget. Um, and so you're going to need to keep an eye on that 
or you're going to turn sanitation upside down along with uh, landfill. Well, let me put it this way. You cannot procure that equipment without a purchase order at some point. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, whether you're, you're tracking or placing orders, I'll give you an example, fire trucks, um, something very similar, uh, get your name on the list. If they come in and you don't have the money and you don't have a purchase order or you changed your mind, uh, they just send it on down the road to the next guy on the list and no harm, no foul. But again, it's heavily dependent on the way that language is, is written and any type of obligation uh, the city may have. So the key is, is uh, are we obligated? And most of these terms uh, Robert's talking about, we are not obligated. So you guys asked the question, that's what I found out, is that it, it is happening out there. And the, the vendors are doing it. Well, if they're happy, it sounds like we ought to be happy. Tell me. You have a very reason exactly, exactly what Chad was saying. We had two commercial trucks in line with a purchase order. It's pure. It's an Antonio can bought out. So they can be the 10 of the orders that the Jack was happy. So that is happening. Kind of an honor among fleets. Um, there is no water, please. <laughs> now, what's their comment is that it's actually not theirs either until that, until it's produced and that pin number is assigned. Then it, then it gets assigned back to the dealership and on and on and on. And that's why, that's why they can do what they're doing. All right, I want to talk. Briefly, about purchase orders that were placed after March 31st of this year. I've got two sheets here, Tammy. Which one do I need? So these are key card transactions? Oh, yeah, okay. All right, I'll talk about that in a minute. But purchase orders after March 31st of this year. Amounted to two million three fifteen eighty one so two, and I, if I'm reading this right, it's still four hundred twenty thousand eight hundred thirty seven dollars fifteen cents outstanding on those. Finish. <coughs> we had some POs after June fourteenth of eleven thousand three hundred seventy two dollars ninety five cents. And what's left open is a hundred of one thousand six hundred six dollars thirty one cents. So, it's for your edification, gentlemen, because I lost my female man. <laughs> Mr. Cole's taking her place, but that doesn't mean he gets well. <laughs> so, P cards after March thirty first. It was one hundred twenty-one thousand nine seventy-four forty-seven. So, put that in the back of your mind. How this thing—it doesn't slow down. It's very difficult to put the brakes on. So this is a living machine, and it's moving every day. But we need to maybe figure out a way to. Slow it down. We can't can't stop it, but maybe we can slow it down. And Mr. Chair, I would argue we put a, a big, big speed bump in there this year uh, as of the March 31st expenditure deadline. You're right; it didn't slow down the phone calls or the emails uh, requesting money or emergency POs. Um, I appreciate our finance team um, and our efforts to vet each one of those, uh, determine if it was a true emergency or tied to something uh, that we wouldn't want to cut our nose off just by our faith um, mm -hmm. to do. But you're right, it didn't slow things down in terms of our workload. But it's a good first step. Well, we're, these are changes that we're trying to implement. So I'm just hopeful everybody understands I'm trying to pay attention to all this stuff. 
And my experience in uh, other uh, entities is uh, we get better at this every year. Yes, sir. Mr. Chair, I think we've done, a, a, if I recall, last year's open purchase order carry forward has been the 20, what was it? How, Janie, you recall how big that number was? Was it 20 million? Yeah, something. And, and now we're down to four plus one, we're down to $5 million. So I think you've done a good job in getting those POs shut off and carried over. And so that was, I commend you all for doing that because that, and plus that helps your job a lot easier by getting those things shut off so that we don't have them. And then we get that, oh, wait a minute, that was a carryover, but I didn't put up my current year budget issue. We've reduced so substantially. Well, we're making progress. And I thank this committee for your support on that. You know, that's substantial progress. So, and the capital outlay project, you can't do anything about those. Those are going to roll over all the time. So, so the number's probably even less than that. Yeah. But okay. Observation. Thank you all. Now, let me get to public participation. Anybody? Anybody online? Ms. Rita, you're going to just sit there and quietly. No, I'm going to talk to the department heads. Oh. <laughs> she didn't say anything in Lima the other day. I, I, think, like she's, I think she's failing. I just wonder if she has laryngitis. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> okay, having no public participation, it's meeting to burn. Test your baseball. Any of you naysayers that said I couldn't be done by five o'clock?